All right, everybody. So I'm here to talk about the House Oversight hearing on the origins of COVID-19. This was a hearing in Congress um, conducted by several congresswomen and men um, for the House Oversight hearing on the origins of the COVID-19 virus. Uh, the chairman is Dr. Brad Wenstrup. So uh, the hearing was two hours and 46 minutes long. I listened the entire thing in detail and went over many, many, it took me many hours to watch it because I would stop it, rewind, play just to, you know, take notes and really get it. So I wanted to pass a few highlights to you because it's honestly pretty disturbing. I, I think all seven and a half billion of us on this planet should want to know where this came from. Um, so, um, so this is from the chairman's uh, congressman, Brad, Dr. Brad Wenstrup. And we'll start, he started by mentioning two of the main names that are going to be mentioned frequently. Dr. Francis Collins, who was the director of the National Institutes of Health uh, until the end of 2021. He held that post for 12 years, and he was actually Dr. Fauci's boss because Dr. Fauci was the director of the National Institutes of Allergies and Infectious Diseases, which is one of the 27 institutes that makes up the National Institutes of Health. Um, but Dr. Fauci held that post, as many as you know, for almost 40 years, started in 84 and just left at the end of the last year. He was also, he was also the chief medical advisor to the president. Um, now, <clears throat> again, Congressman Brad Wenstrup's, Dr. Brad Wenstrup's opening statement, he said the Eco Health Alliance was the recipient of NIH, and when I say NIH, I'm referring to the National Institutes of Health. I'm just saying NIH. He said EcoHealth Alliance was the recipient of NIH funding grants to perform coronavirus research. He said COVID-19 has both a binding domain optimized for human cells and a furin cleavage site, a small part of the virus that makes it so infectious it was not seen before in any SARS-related viruses. He said the Wuhan Institute of Virology was conducting gain-of-function research on novel bat coronaviruses. Former COVID-19 Task Force Coordinator Dr. Deborah Burks said it was a gain-of-function said it was gain-of-function research at the Wuhan lab, contrary to what Dr. Fauci said. And the Wuhan Institute has poor biosafety and was doing this research at biosafety level two. Also, he said there was a leaked DARPA grant application, which was going to be funded by taxpayer dollars, U.S. taxpayer dollars. But this leaked DARPA grant application revealed that the Wuhan Institute proposed inserting fewer furin cleavage sites into novel coronaviruses, the same genetic aspect of COVID-19. Again, you know, there's another, again, this is the Wuhan Institute applied for a grant, and in the grant they said they were proposing to insert furin cleavage sites into novel coronaviruses, the same unique genetic aspect of COVID-19, which has also never been found in any SARS-related virus. <clears throat> and again, the congressman state said that the State Department fact sheet and multiple researchers at the Wuhan Institute were sick with COVID-19-like symptoms in the fall of 2019. He said that the NIH exempted Eco Health Alliance and the Wuhan Institute from gain of function from a gain of function ban while the US had a moratorium on gain of function research. Eco Health violated federal grant policy and failed to file its five year progress report for more than two years, violating terms of the grant. Um uh, another one of the four guys on the panel that the Congress uh, men and women were, 
questioning was doc was uh, well, he's not a doctor, but is Mr. Nicholas Wade. He said the furin cleavage site placed in the S1 and S2 junction is the only virus in the SARS family to have this furin cleavage site. On January 31st, 2020, okay, these dates are important. So on January 31st, 2020, Dr. Fauci received an email from four virologists led by Dr. Christian Anderson of Scripps Research. All four concluded that SARS-2 COVID was, uh, they concluded that SARS-2 COVID-19, because of its furin cleavage site, could not have been made in nature. But four days later, for some reason, four days later, those scientists came back on February 4th and Christian Anderson repudiated and derided lab leak as a crackpot theory. No new scientific evidence. <clears throat> but but um, the congressman said that no new scientific evidence appeared between January 31st and February 4th, those four days, to make these four scientists make a 180 degree turn. So there's something else that made them come back and say that. Um, now, Dr. Rob, Robert Redfield is the former CDC director. He was the CDC director from 2018 till the end of 2021. So he was the CDC director for the first two years of the pandemic. And those of you who don't know, CDC is Centers for Disease Control. He's also been a virologist studying viruses for 45 years. Um, he said the nature spillover uh, or lab leak, um, those were the two hypotheses that they had to pursue. Um, but he says the nature spillover would involve bats to humans via an intermediary species. He said the lab leak uh, gain of fun was, you know, was the other one. Now he said gain of function research in that research, scientists seek to increase the transmissibility or the pathogenicity of an organism in order to better understand that organism and inform preparedness efforts and the development of countermeasures such as therapy, therapeutics and vaccines. In the earliest days, Redfield said he based on his initial he said based on his initial analysis of the data he came to believe and he still believes today that it indicates that covid-19 more likely was the result of an accidental lab leak than the result of a natural spillover event he said this conclusion is based primarily on the biology of the virus uh, itself including a rapid high infectivity for human-to-human -human transmission, which would then predict rapid evolution of new variants, as well as a number of other important factors, <clears throat> which also include the unusual actions in and around Wuhan in the fall of 2019. <clears throat> he believes gain-of-function research unleashed this virus on the world without a means to stop it, and resulted in the deaths of millions of people. He said, because of this, we should call for a moratorium on gain-of-function research. Again, did you hear that? And I wrote this word by word, what Dr. Robert Redfield, the former CDC director, said. He said, gain-of-function re research unleashed this virus, this COVID-19 virus, on the world without a means to stop it and resulted in the deaths of millions of people. Shouldn't we find out where this came from? <clears throat> now, another one of the scientists slash doctors on the panel was Dr. Um, let's see, Dr. Jamie Metzel, who was a former member of the World Health, world Health Organization he was on their expert advisory counter, uh, advisory committee on developing global standards for governance and oversight on human genome editing. Now, Dr. Metzl first 
thing he pointed out was that he's a lifelong Democrat and a progressive thinker, and he says this should not be political. He should this should not be political, which he's right. This should be looked at objectively, and independently of uh, of politics. <clears throat> He said the Chinese government has been very aggressive to find an intermediary host, um, and they've test, they've sequenced about 100,000 animals and haven't found anything. He said in SARS and MERS, the intermediary was found quickly. And he, like he mentioned, that the big powerful Chinese government would love to get rid of the lab leak theory and doing this they could do this if they could find animals that would test positive for the virus. So this is another indication that it was a lab leak because he said the big, bag, the big strong, powerful Chinese government has not found one single animal after testing over 100,000 animals. Now back to Dr. Robert Redfield. <clears throat> He's, he said uh, on gain-of-function research, he strongly urges a moratorium. He said, advocates of this research say they get ahead of the curve, but Redfield says that we don't need to make pathogens more transmissible or more pathogenic in order to get ahead of the curve. We can, benef we can begin to deal with those pathogens as they evolve. He said that the Wuhan lab was absolutely conducting gain-of-function research. Redsfield said that he doesn't know of any vaccines or therapeutics ever created by gain-of-function research. He said gain-of-function caused this pandemic. He doesn't find any tangible benefits to gain-of-function. Again, he is again saying gain-of-function caused this pandemic. <clears throat> and again, Redfield's Dr. Robert Redfield said there were infections as far back as September of 2019. Now, Congresswoman, Congresswoman Mali Otakis questioned Dr. Robert Redfield as well. Now, he, Dr. Robert Redfield, of course, because of his credentials, he was the favorite uh, person for these Congress people to talk to. You. <clears throat> now, I'm going to mention one name. Uh, Let's see, well, anyways, so Dr. Robert Redfield t said he told Dr. Fauci and Dr. Farrar that he felt it was not scientifically plausible that this virus went from a bat to humans and became one of the most infectious viruses in humans. He said MERS and SARS entered the human species via an intermediary animal, and they never learned how to go hu from human to human, even to this day. <clears throat> he was excluded from calls and meetings because he had a different point of view. Again, Dr. Robert Redfield said that Dr. Fauci and Dr. Collins uh, excluded him from meetings and emails because he didn't agree with their narrative. There's a paper called The Proximal Origin, Proximal Origin of SARS-CoV-2 that was published in the Nature Medicine Journal. Four scientists uh, authored this. Dr. Christian Anderson, Andrew Rambout, Ian Lip Lipkin, Edwards Holmes, and there's a fifth name here, Robert Gary. Those are the four, those are the group of scientists that changed their minds in four days, first saying, you know, that this had to have come from a lab, and then four days later saying that was a conspiracy theory. So they, they went 180 degrees in four days, even though there was no data or uh, any hard evidence to persuade them to do that. And again, the people on the panel, including Dr. Robert Redfield and Dr. Metzl, said there was no new data or any scientific evidence to make these scientists change their mind in four days. <clears throat> Dr. Redfield said science has debate and they squashed all debate. Redfield said this was an inaccurate paper that was part of a narrative that they were creating. He said they were ne 
negating any possibility this came from a lab. Redfield said there is no doubt that NIH was funding gain-of-function research in the Wuhan lab. On January 27, 2020, uh, Congresswoman Malio Takis said that Dr. Fauci was told via email that the NIH had a monetary relationship with the Wuhan Institute through Eco Health Alliance, something he previously denied. <clears throat> Dr. Robert Redfield agreed that the American tax dollars funded the gain of function research that created this virus. Okay, let's repeat that. This is very important. This is the former CDC director, and he said, he agreed that the American tax dollars funded the gain of function research that created this COVID 19 virus. Redfield said not only were there taxpayer dollars funding this from the NIH, but also from the State Department, the USID, and the DOD, Department of Defense. Congresswoman, look at my time here, Congresswoman Comer uh, then talked to Redfield. Redfield, Dr. Redfield said, Drs. Collins and Fauci locked, locked him out of conversations about the lab, or they locked out of conversations the lab leak theory. They would not allow that in conversations. Redfield said he was locked out because he had a different point of view. He, he said he didn't see this was anything like SARS or MERS because they never le learned to transmit human to human and f he felt this virus was too infectious to humans. There is a lot of evidence that the Wuhan lab published in 2014 that they put the H2 receptor into humanized mice so it could infect human tissue. So, he told Fauci and Collins in January 2020 that they had to strongly pursue the lab leak possibility. He said he was excluded from a February 1 meeting and subsequent meetings and emails. He didn't know this until it was revealed by the Freedom of Information Act revealing the emails. He said he was very upset. He was told he was excluded because he had a different point of view and they made a decision they would keep the, this confidential until they came up with a single narrative. Redfield said this is antithetical to science. Science never selects a single narrative. We foster debate. <clears throat> um, I had mentioned the name Dr. Farrar, Dr. Jeremy Farrar earlier. He is now the chief scientist of the World Health Organization. Now, Congresswoman Lesko. <clears throat> um, okay, she, she talked to Dr. Robert Redfield. Um, now, Dr. Redfield said there was no gain of function research before 2012. He mentioned he's a virologist and Dr. Fauci is an immunologist. <clears throat> he tried to explain to Fauci that in the case of SARS, a civic cat infected humans and in MERS, a camel infected humans. He tried telling Fauci that when these two viruses infected man via an intermediary host, that they never learned to go human to human. The original outbreaks were less than a thousand people and the epidemics died. He said this virus, SARS-2 COVID-19, was immediately probably the second most infectious virus to ever infect man after measles. He immediately said this wasn't natural. Redfield said in September, okay, now this is interesting. Now first, Let's just remember that Dr. Robert Redfield, the former CDC director, already mentioned that there were, um, there's proof that there were COVID cases as early as September 2019. Now he says, in September 2019, in the Wuhan lab, they deleted the sequences, which he said is highly irregular, and researchers don't usually like to do that. They also changed the command and control of the Wuhan lab from the civilian control to the military control, which is highly unusual. And they also let contractors redo the ventilation system in the Wuhan lab. 
all this in September 2019 when uh, the first cases appeared. <clears throat> Dr. Jamie F. Metzel, who spoke, you know, he spoke earlier, um, he's the former World Health Organization expert advisor. He, uh, again, this is Dr. Metzel. He said in the beginning of the pandemic, when he or other scientists wanted to bring up the topic of a possible lab leak, he said uh, there were extremely strong headwinds against that. There was this, un there was this manufactured consensus. He said people like him were labeled conspiracy theorists. He said they were f formed. Uh, they formed a group later in 2020 that some have called the Paris Group. All the members of that community were aggressively trying to play scientific papers with journals and had zero success. There was a wall that was extremely difficult to get over. So, again, those are some of the highlights from the House Oversight uh, Committee hearing on the origins of COVID-19. Um, I mean, don't, I think we should all want to get to the bottom of this, and it's pretty disturbing what the former CDC director was saying about the former director of NIH, Dr. Fauci, and his box, Dr. Collins. Um, this is looking pretty bad on the part of uh, Dr. Collins and Dr. Fauci and s many other doctors and scientists, including those four that flipped when they flipped in four days, first one day in January, the end of January 2020, they're saying, oh, this is definitely a, a unnatural and came from a lab. And then four days later, oh, that's crazy, a crazy idea. So, um, and again, I don't know, I think I mentioned when I was reading this that there were, um, I don't know if I wrote it down on here, but there were um, lab workers in the Wuhan lab that were, that got sick with COVID-like symptoms in September of 2019. I think I did mention that. Um, but, I mean, this is just adding up to be one big fraudulent whole... I don't even know... To, honestly, I don't even know what to say anymore. But, um, but like Dr. Robert Redfield says, science fosters debate, and they shut down all debate. Dr. Fauci said he represented science. Well, he represented his narrative and wh why was he so adamant that it didn't come from a lab <clears throat> is it because he was funding it anyways uh, before i get upset here i'm just going to shut this off it's pretty disturbing